So I will call to order a special meeting of the ARPA uh, Commission, the American Rescue Plan um, Act Commission, January 24, 2022, it's 132. The first item um, is to appoint a chairperson. So the commission, as you all know, first, thank you all for your willingness uh, to serve on this really important commission. It will, it should be a short term, couple of year commission. The funds have to be spent by a certain date. Um, and so we have 11 members. We have appointed nine of the 11 members. Um, the Willington Parks and Rec Commission still has yet to um, determine their member. Alan is here today um, from them. And then Christina Rylos is the will be the board of finance representative um, when the board um, selects the next meet, and we will officially appoint um, hopefully both those members. So today we have everyone um, except Robin Stewart and Troy are um, on Zoom with us. So we need a chairperson for this commission. I nominate Christina Milo. So oh, no. willing to do it. I think she'd be fabulous. You have a I lot of experience. I know she just agreed to chair something yeah. else. I didn't know that would be possible. Okay. Christina, how do you? Um, well, I'm, I'll second it. Second it by Tom. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so you think it'll just be a couple of years? Yeah, so the the, the dollars have we are going to determine how often we meet. Mm -hmm. The dollars have to be uh, encumbered by December 31st, 2024, mm -hmm. and they must be spent by December 31st, 2026. Mm -hmm. So depending on how we de decide to use them, um, determines the length of time this committee needs to be active. So if we were to let's say spend all of those dollars in one large um project it could take us the, the entire time depending on mm -hmm. the process of the project which is why they give us two years to spend it so we spend it all before that um what's left is reporting is, is there she's not officially on yet that's right yeah so yeah so you can't really um that's true We could. Well, if we have no other takers, could we table that to the next meeting? We could. That is a good point. But did you want to be chair? I do not. I, I really think this is. Oh, and here comes Samantha. Um, I think it's important um, that as many voices as possible are represented. And, and I would be integral in my office on the board of selecting well, um, but I would prefer it be someone other than myself. I am willing if no one is, um, but my preference would be that it be someone else. If we're not making any, I mean, looking at the agenda, we're not making any decisions today necessarily. Correct. So if we're not, then I would say just table right. it. We right. probably want to have a chairman if we're going to start allocating funding, but if we're not doing that today. I think we can. Hi, Samantha. We are, we are talking about discussing the appointment of a chairperson. And so far, there has been a motion and a second to appoint Christina as our chairperson. I mean, you should be able to unmute yourself. So Stuart, Troy, and um, Samantha, you can unmute yourself and speak as uh, needed. I can, thank you. So we can, we can um, table this. I can move forward with this meeting, and then we can make it official at our next meeting. Um, unless, and by then, the other people will be appointed too. Yeah. So it's just two, you, and then yeah. someone from Parks and Rec, which may or may not be Alan. <laughs> 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 right. You know how that condition works. <laughs> so, um, all right. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry about our dentist reading calls. <laughs> Usually, it's okay. 
Okay. Um, so we will, there's a motion on the floor. Can we, can we vote on? I can rescind, uh, rescind my second. second and then we can take the motion back and then, and then put it on the agenda. Is anyone, does anyone object to um, us moving forward with the chair next time around um, with it being Christina? Unless there was someone out there that was just itching to be the chair. Try and steer it up, shake your hands, head too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think they both have their hands full. Okay. All right. So, Tom, you withdraw your second. Yeah. And, and I'll withdraw. And Jenny will withdraw her motion. So, I will make a motion to uh, table the appointment of chairperson until our next meeting. There's a second. Second. Second of my mic. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Troy, is that aye? And Samantha? Aye. Okay. Unanimous. All right. The appointment of a recording secretary. I would entertain a motion for a recording secretary from amongst our group. So that person will be responsible for the minutes of um, our meeting. <laughs> That's not one I will want. How uh, detailed minutes do we want? There is, uh, there's a video so that what needs to be in the minutes is um, any action taken, who's present at the time of the meeting, the discussion. Um, so we're gonna record? We are recording. So we're gonna record Our all plan the minutes is to record for all the meetings. I, I right. mean, I don't have a problem with doing statutorily compliant minutes, but uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of meeting on the moment. But I, I don't mind doing, you know, short and sweet action taking. We can start with that and see how it goes. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Mike D'Amato, recording secretary? Aye. 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 <laughs> Setting a meeting calendar. So it's up to this uh, commission to determine how often we want to meet and when we meet. Um, I would say I did, typically I would draft up um, a calendar. I did not because I didn't know where um, the thought process with this um, commission was. I would think um, at the very least, maybe by, uh, you know, twice a month, um, and my suggestion would be this time of day, if that works for folks. Um, the majority of this board are staff members are at the staff level. Um, and while we're all here, unless anyone has an objection, Mondays are, are good as Mike D'Amato is in the office on Monday. Monday at 1 30 is fine. Monday is good. Other work days throughout the week are not good. So as long as it stays Monday. Perfect. All right. So um, how often is our next question? Bi-weekly? Bi -weekly? Oh, I think I but I every other week. Um, that would take care of um, those weeks where we have more Mondays if we went every other week. And then we can do more or less if, as needed once we get flowing with projects. And then if we don't have business, we can always cancel everything. Yeah, it's probably better to cancel than hold specials That's for people correct. that want to follow along. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I agree. All right, so we'll go with Mondays at 1.30. And is today a, a fourth of my meeting? It is not. So it would be on the options of those, which yeah. might be uh, good if they need to weigh in on something at some point. Or... No, we would call on the schedule of the 7th. The next one would be the 7th. Right, because there's a Monday, next Monday's the 31st. Yeah. Unless we did second and fourth. But if we meet on the 
We meet early on, on 1.30 on Mondays and the Board of Selectmen meet afterwards, so there's an opportunity. Samantha? Um, yeah, someone had mentioned that they thought it was easier to cancel than to reschedule. So maybe we should do it weekly and then just cancel meetings as needed. Like, we could do that. <laughs> if we do it okay. bi-weekly and a Monday falls on a holiday, then we're going to go a month without. We've already, and I just feel, you know, that it would be important to address these funds that we should, since it, since it is temporary, you know, I feel like that's my, my opinion. So I'm putting it out there. <laughs> How does everyone feel about weekly? It's a bigger commitment. Yeah. I think bi weekly would be sufficient for now. And then I guess it's going forward. We need to change that. We could change it more yeah. or less, so, right? We can, we can ask. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we will set um, bi weekly Mondays uh, at 1 30. You want to say beginning today? Today we'll start, so we'll go every other week from here. So I will make a motion that um, we meet bi weekly Mondays at 1 30, uh, beginning with today's date. Is there a second? Sure. Seconded by Tom. Any discussion? After there's a discussion before. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Or any <clears throat> abstentions? Sam, were you a yes? Okay. The reason I asked I'll just abstain from voting. For now, I'll uh, yes, from I'll a roll call vote. <laughs> okay. All right, so the next item is overview of the ARPA funds and the ordinance. So you should all in your hands have a copy of the ordinance. Um, so that you're aware of that. And we gave you um, a copy of the Treasury's final rule summary. Initially, what came out was the um, interim final rule. And the final rule has, um, has uh, come from Treasury. It takes effect on April 1st, 2022. However, um, we can take advantage of the new provisions. Um, prior to the effective date, so we can start following the final rule. We did not make you copies of the final rule. It's a 400 um, plus page document. Kelsey, um, I believe, sent you all a link to the US Treasury site. All of the documents that um, I've referenced in the past um, have come from that site. So um, you can, you can um, make a copy. If you needed any copies, let us know. CCM put together um, the American Rescue Plan Toolkit, which is very helpful. I did not make you a copy yet because we're anticipating it could change now that the final rule has come out. So when that does, it's just an easy tool. We'll share that with you um, in a paper copy if you would like and um, a link to the electronic copy. If you like the electronic copy. And then they've given us an overview, um, which is, Kelsey, did you send that separate? Yes. Yeah an overview, um, which is a, a much more condensed version of the final rule that will um, put, put in some of the key components. So Willington received just over $1.7 million and we received it in two, uh, two tranches. And we received the first one in June. The second will come one year uh, to date from that, from that date. So one year later, so uh, on or after May 12th will, will be when we'll get the second is in two equal portions. So it was about $874,000 we received um, the first time. So we have that in our possession. We are considered um, an NEU, a non-entitlement entity. So there is reporting specific to NEUs that needs to be done. Um, and that right now will come out of our finance office. I will tell you some of uh, the uses are broken down into categories. Um, they are items that respond to the public health impacts. We're, we're replacing uh, lost public sector revenue, premium pay, 
uh, water and sewer infrastructure or broadband in infrastructure. Those are the main overarching categories. And within each category, there's a breakdown of how the items can be, how the dollars can be spent. One of the key changes in the uh, replacing lost revenue, they gave us a formula to determine your lost revenue with a very generous 4.1% increase. Um, I don't think any of us see that kind of increase in our revenue or up to $10 million. So if you were a, a city that receives more than $10 million, you could take at least $10 million out of the lost revenue. By taking the dollars in lost revenue, there's a much more broad use of the dollars. And that's basically for any government service, which um, would streamline our reporting. Any service that we would typically provide as a municipality, we could use if we took the dollars in lost revenue and did some of our projects that way. Um, it, just it gets greater impact. The public health and economic impact um, item is where we would see being able to give um, loans or grants to businesses and or individuals. So when we're deciding um, what to, to do, it would have to fall into one of these categories. The revenue loss would not be a category to use those funds for because it doesn't fall under a, a normal government service. And I think I can tell you, Samantha is here representing that Economic Development Commission and the board of them alongside the board of selectmen really have identified um, our small businesses as um, individuals we want to see how we can help um, initially. Premium pay um, allows you to to give an increased um, pay for particular um, job classifications. I will tell you with the new final rule, um, almost all of our front facing municipal employees fall into that category now. Before it was first responders, healthcare workers, human services um, workers. So very few within our world fell into that premium pay category. So there's a, a little bit more broad use there. We can also make water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure um, uh, investments with these dollars, and they would fall under that category. There's a, a lot of information to digest. I encourage you all to read the uh, overview of the final rule. If you go to try to read the final rule, um, you'll lose your mind. <laughs> there is a lot of um, extra information outside the, 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 the basics. So this really highlights the actual uses. There's no one at Treasury, US Treasury that's going to be checking or our projects and then giving us the green light. It is on us to determine whether or not a project falls into the criteria of the final rule and move forward with it. Knowing that if we did not follow um, the final rule, at some point, Treasury could come back and ask for those dollars. So we're self-governing, but there's, there's a pretty broad use of these dollars. And, and the idea was that we um, respond to the negative impacts of the public health crisis of COVID-19. So, that is my very uh, quick overview. I really, really encourage you to, to read this through. One of the, there are a couple of things we cannot use the funds for. And what we cannot use them for is to pay any um, previous debts. So well, the library bond, for example, we can't use these dollars to pay off the remaining dollars of the library bond, or at least we took out um, on a vehicle years ago. We cannot use it for legal purposes. And um, the, the one where uh, one additional, and I want to make sure I read this correctly, it gets a little bit tricky when you start talking about um, offsetting our budget. General, I'm just not talk about it over health. Oh, 
41. Get the right page here. All right, so we can't make deposits into a pension fund, cannot offset a reduction in net tax revenue. Um, no debt service or replenishing financial services. We cannot add to our general fund with these dollars and no satisfaction of settlement or judgment. So states and territories may not use this funding to directly or indirectly offset a reduction in uh, net tax revenue resulting from a change in law beginning on March 3rd, 2021 through the last day of the fiscal year in which the funds have been spent. So I know that question has come up over and over um, and there's different interpretations by individuals, but you know, when reading and following the language of the rule, that's when we want to be cognizant of. With that, any questions? And we can make, if anyone like a physical copy of the overview, um, we can certainly make you one. If um, paper is the way you like to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll make copies for everybody. And then um, a very quick reference, a handy reference was the CCM. So if they redo theirs, we'll share with you the toolkit um, as it stands now. But um, there's some things that aren't in there that are in the final goal. And the big um, change to revenue loss is not indicated in there. And that's where you can either use the formula or you can take up to the $10 million maximum. So um, I wouldn't suggest because we want to be able to help um, our, our businesses and our individuals. My preference wouldn't be to take it all in that manner. Um, but it gives us more flexibility in determining projects. If we were to take those dollars as lost revenue and we wanted to purchase, um, Board of Finance was talking about um, a request from one of the fire departments in a second ambulance, we could use those funds for that. We could use those funds for anything we would typically um, spend in government services. So we could purchase a, a new of a work vehicle, we could um, make investments in our road infrastructure in, into our physical buildings. So any, again, anything. And schools is also something we can use those dollars for. Schools have been given um, funds for learning um, and use in their buildings, but they're not nearly enough to make any real investments in the facility. So we could um, go that direction if we chose. I know a lot of towns that have looked at it, upgrading ventilation in uh, public buildings is really key and extremely costly. And so the first thing some towns have looked at was to do that in their school buildings and um, could do one school maybe with the funds they got depending on the size of the town. So a little bit frustrating, but necessary with COVID. <clears throat> Any questions regarding this high level overview? So that moves us to the discussion of project approvals. We have to decide how we want to hear them and how we will approve them, how they will be weighed, determined, open the floor for discussion. So we, we the town we received submissions from people who had thoughts on how to spend the money already, right? So you have sort of a- I have some. Whatever I'd asked to part, I'd gone out to the departments yeah. and asked them to submit items um, that did not include the fire departments um, or the library that was department heads within the town office building. So I do have some suggestions there. Um, I assume once we um, begin moving on this, we will hear from our emergency services. Uh, I'm sure both Tom and um, Stuart can you know, speak to that. We will be getting submissions from them as well. It's how do we want to ask for submissions? How are we going to weigh them when they come in? Should we have a form? I think we should have, we want to be able to address it so everything is on a, a level playing field and determine how we're going to rate them. So, a form similar to the CIP form. Oh. Samantha? 
I just have a question. I, I know you're moving on to like, how will we rate projects as they come in as presented by, what are you referring to? Different town departments who may want money for projects? Or are you referring to how are we going to, as a committee, decide um, <clears throat> which of those projects are the most valuable? Or the other thing I'm wondering is, <clears throat> it so I don't know if I'm getting this correctly, but it sounds like when you've saying like you would, did you say that you would most likely want to take, since we can take up to $10 million unrestricted, is, are you saying that you want to do that? Just take that and then just determine how to distribute it rather than fall under the other types of categories. I just, I, I didn't know if that's what to take all of it because then that would not allow us to do things like grants or loans to small businesses or individuals mm -hmm. that doesn't fall under our typical government services. So I would not be in favor of taking all of it. I think we would need to look at that as a project, determine how much money we needed, and then look at, do we just want to take the rest in another manner? Do we want to take a portion of? So this commission has to determine that. This commission has to determine how we want to spend the dollars and how we want to um, have some, a, a project submitted and then how we're going to approve them. Okay, so I was wondering if we would decide what, how we wanted to receive the money first before we started allocating it to others, but I don't know, you're saying that they would overlap, that we would be receiving um, requests from people and then alongside that simultaneously be deciding how much we are going to allocate for each part. I think that's up to us to decide. Okay, well, I just, I wasn't sure what we were discussing at the moment, what we were voting, which part? Category, right. I think when we, based on the requests, how we choose to allocate the funds will answer the question of, you know, if we look at everything and we, and we decide based on the submissions, you know, what the most appropriate use of the funds are, that'll, that'll inform whether we take it as revenue loss or, I think we'll sort of answer that question in the process. Um, so we should, first, are, are we, so we're obviously going to solicit um, ideas or answers from departments and then. Uh, how about just public, gen general public? So let's maybe we can figure out how we want to just let everybody know right. first, and then access. I think um, the other. Well, anyway, so I think we should do that. Let's figure that out. Right. So the in the next item, we'll be discussing community involvement. Yep. It's integral to us moving forward. Is it? All of our meetings are in public. They will all be posted and shared. We want to encourage people, if they couldn't attend it, they still watch, they hear what we're talking about. And if they participate, I think some public forum um, or would be uh, key, I think important so that we hear from our residents. They may have ideas of how to use the money. We have um, what we'll put out, we'll get out to you as the results from the survey that we put out. And so you all have those to look at as well. Um, and everyone has an idea of how they should use the dollars. The first thing we have to say, I think when we're deciding approval, is does it meet the criteria, criteria of the final rule? And that's the, I think that for us, as we're determining use of dollars, that's number one. So someone may give us a really great idea and it may be a really great thing to move forward with, but if it doesn't fall into the usage category, we have to say no to that. Um, and, and move forward. And then after that, prioritizing, I will share with you that our neighbors in Stafford um, have a similar commission. And upon their first, this was their first meeting and I haven't followed too much where they've got so far, their discussion of a checklist for approval was meeting the criteria, prioritize um, to see if there were three quotes available or a, a state vendor contract. They wanted to add a 5% contingency to any project appoint a liaison of the group to the project to report expenses um, and that the commission accepts or rejects the project by a majority vote and that this was their rule does not have to be ours the chairperson may not cause a tie but in the event there is a tie the chair can uh, vote to break in so so what if we um start off by you know i guess the First thing would be making sure that people are aware. You know, I think maybe we identify today 
how we want to do the advertising like you said as far as is anybody any member of the public just going to be able to submit something or does it have to go through you know a certain person or you know maybe we decide how we want to accept that so that we can immediately start letting people know they can submit their ideas and then at the next meeting we settle on the form the, the questions we want to ask and how we want to collect the information but that's at least while and while that's while that's running we have the form we've been advertising we can start working on the criteria but at least because i'm just thinking as far as timing goes you know if we wait to do everything in each meeting we're going to lose a month before we um and at least that should get that part rolling and if we set a time frame of when we're going to start evaluating that we can sort of agree as a group what the criteria will be as far as kind of what you had mentioned um, i agree i think there are probably some projects i can tell you i have a couple um and i think the our ems does as well that they think are, are timely and we should move forward with i know from uh, things that i plan to bring forward um it includes technology upgrades um to what staff uses what COVID showed us is that at any time we could uh, have to go home and work and we are not set up in that capacity at all. So making sure that we have what we need um, as well as upgrading some of the uh, Wi-Fi services here at the town office building. And I know um, there are some things that the uh, fire departments have talked about. They submitted to CIT um, and then talked about a board of finance that would be things that could be used with these funds and we may want to move forward with sooner rather than later. So I'm not yeah. sure if we want the public to submit projects individually. I don't know how everyone feels about that. I think they should probably go through any departments yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, in, in town yeah. and we try to make sure we, we hit all the key areas. Or could we have like a public or a hearing at night and, and that would be the time for the public to be heard mm -hmm. you know to, um and maybe that if they wanted something they could they could come to us and, say, and then maybe we have to say well you need to put that somewhere like that that, that would go to economic development or, or to, to flush it out a little bit or something like that maybe that would be a way of take care of the public so the public's heard and people can come forward yeah, and I, I would anticipate we'd hear a lot of the things that we got in the survey because there was a vast array of uses of the dollars in there. But what I, I would like to see is us moving forward with some other projects that people have been thinking about, um, just waiting for us to be up and running. I know economic development, Samantha, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have been working on a loan or grant program for businesses. So they're probably ready to say, look, let's set aside X amount of dollars for this. Yes, program. we are. <laughs> $300,000 for, for small mini grants of 5K. Right. And, probably and, a two question it. rule, which was addressed in the um, final rule. I, I accidentally didn't see the CCM one. So I started reading. I got about 20 pages into the whatever, how many pages it is. So I, I saw some um, criterion that they do require because I was really an advocate for just granting them out. But um, there is a criterion they would have to prove, obviously, a revenue loss. So um, unlike us, you know, it looks like with the even the the ten million, the, uh, people don't even have no one's having to show that to just get that granted because I'm assuming it's from the point of view that administratively that would cost more and waste more time than just getting people the money that they need to have. Which so that's our position. We just want to be able to get the funds and you know dollars lose value daily so we want to get funds um into the hands of businesses that need it as quickly as we can so and i agree thanks with you. So i think a couple of projects that are probably ready to bring forth to us and then start huh. moving on while we determine how we're going to use the rest of the funds jenny may have some thoughts in the human services area mm -hmm. um Alan maybe thinking about some upgrades to um our you know, parks and recreation areas. Um, as we know, one of the big things that came out during COVID was being uh, able to be outside and not inside together. So promoting that in our parks, our uses. So I like the, I think we have to have some sort of public 
um, hearing involvement, what that looks like. Right now, during this latest outbreak, I'm not sure. Um, Happened personally, so like time. Do we have a list now of, of time you can see for town retriever that we can email yes. a request along with a copy of so, mm -hmm. so everybody probably well, every, almost everybody knows already, maybe. I don't, um, can, can solicit to start that do that until soon, absolutely. And then, I mean, thinking about the public hearing not that far down the road, but as we're gathering the initial stuff that you're, you're saying from the town agencies, then somewhere after that work on public we solicit have a public hearing. Yeah. And I think we can set one up at least virtually for now and start with that. At least it gives folks an opportunity to have a voice mm -hmm. um, sooner rather than later and in the safest capacity. But would anyone be opposed to, let's say our next meeting is would be the 7th of uh, February, if individuals had um, proposals and they got them to us, we were able to put them on an agenda and start having a discussion about a couple of things. Um, mm -hmm. To me, um, the first thing I can see up there is the program that EDC is talking about. I think that um, along with probably some EMS um, things would be at the top of the list of things and, and human services. And, and these things, I'm these folks are ready to bring forth and have someone to sign on. The only thing that I'm having worked with the EDC on this and being very much thinking it's super important, the, the thing that I'm struggling with is if they ask for 100K or 300K, I don't know if I'm comfortable or, or for something else, right? Because for EDC, I helped you that, so I want to help. But yeah. for somebody else's <laughs> thing, right? If somebody wants a fire truck and it's a, you know $500,000, that $500,000 might feel important because it's the third thing we review. But after we see everything else, we might not be comfortable. So like, I don't know how to become comfortable with the amounts until I see everything. Right. Do we wait and have a full plan and then like see at key and then start deciding? Or... Is there, so I'm thinking, is there a way for us to say, okay, EDC wants $300,000. So we're gonna tell you to, to go, is there a way to sort of earmark it or earmark a hundred thousand and let them get started. And then when we get through the rest of it, we can come back and sort of reallocate in phases yeah. because otherwise we're, I don't know. I'm, I don't know how I get comfortable with what we would spend if we don't know the totality of what's going I to agree be. with you, actually. So I just think I mean, that's about a quarter or a little bit less than a quarter. Yeah. I'm sorry. Or do we say you have an FPA that can submit project requests and then we'll know what we have and build it similar to a CIP plan? Let's just try to move fast. Okay? And well, yeah. what a, that's, that's why I suggested weekly meetings so we would move fast. <laughs> Immediately, or start. Yeah, twenty percent or thirty percent, whatever yeah. makes sense. And the in the biggest one out there, I, I know, is getting dollars into the hands of our small businesses. Um, but I don't want to discount our residents at the same time. And, and you know, I see Jenny shaking oh. her head. We recognize how much our residents are are struggling, but coming up with how we do that may take a little bit longer. Samantha. Um, well, to, to address what Mike was talking about, I think that um, I agree with you, actually, because I was looking at the amount and I'm like, wow, if this was my home budget or I knew that this was a limited amount, would I really want to you know, do this? But I feel like I just want to I, and I, I'm also really wanting um, for human services to have funding as well, because I would like to see it in the hands of people. Um, but with businesses, you know, I just want to also point out that if a business fails in Wellington, then we don't get their revenue. So that it's kind of like, you know, an extra push to, you know, I realize that's true in every way, of course, for everything, but it's just a long-term thought. Um, and then I wanted to point out that I think there was, you mentioned four different areas, which I should know since I read those 20 pages of thing, but there's like basically four different areas. So I was uh, one of them being, I think the, biz, the the human services and the business would fall under um, the public health crisis aspect of it rather than the um, uh, governmental aspect and the municipal aspect. So I feel that maybe we could just allocate like a certain chunk for that portion. You know, we could consider it on um, a lesser scale, not as detailed as we're allocating every dollar, but we know we're going to spend at least a quarter on this part and, that, you know, so that we could just break it down into smaller bits because I do agree that it gets overwhelming and I don't want to say, oh, we took this and then realize, wow, we can't get an ambulance that we need or something that would be, you know, horrible. So 
I think we can break it. I'm just so my what I'm addressing is I think we could break it down into smaller chunks. I have a new cat over here. I'm sorry. She keeps attacking me this entire meeting. That's why I'm, I'm sorry. She's very feisty. We want to send out a request for proposals from um, not just the different departments within the town hall, but the library, maybe the senior center. Um, Along with the guidelines. Along with the guidelines, right? So the, the key, and then set up a public hearing to hear from individuals. Is that a deadline or to Samantha's, Samantha's point, do we want to say we'll put X dollars in the pocket? I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that maybe we're putting the cart before the horse and that maybe we need to do like Stafford and come up with what the guidelines really are before we even? entertain the idea of submissions. So, and I mean, we could piggyback on what they're doing, pretty much do the same thing, but we need to be clear what we're asking for. Yes, and, and so a little bit of yes, and I say that sounds wishy-washy. In their very first meeting, they discussed possible action on three different items um, that all fell into categories. And I'll tell you the first one was uh, purchasing cardiac monitors for uh, emergency services, purchasing communication radio package for emergency services, and nine body cameras and six vehicle cameras for the police department. So while they were determining some things, they had individuals bring them requests right away that they knew um, they felt needed to be asked for and the commission um, agreed with. Now, um, Alex, I know you're on this call and you're a little bit more familiar with what they've done in Stafford. Um, yep. They didn't approve every project, did they? No, the only projects that have been approved so far are for EMS. So they, they started hearing some, moved quickly on some of those EMS requests, um, and then are taking, you know, taking their time to hear all of the details on the others. So I think we need to really think out what we want to do, but there may be some items um, of a more timely manner that we move forward with. I will tell you one of the things is, um, the fit test machine, uh, Stuart, correct, uh, for the fire department. And that would fit all of our EMS workers with N95 masks. And I think that's really important. So probably something we'd want to, you know, if they were to bring that request to us formally, move forward with, with something like that. Um, and while we develop a whole process, that someone could bring us a, a request and, and we still have to, to vet it and determine, and we may have lots of questions about it. At the same time, some things may be very easy for us to say, yes, we received these dollars and that's absolutely what we should spend it on. And then slow roll the rest of it as we put together a bigger plan. So Stafford um, has done a little bit of both. I think it's important that we have an overall um, big picture of the dollars, but move forward, I can tell you East Windsor, before they looked at anything else, they put out money to small businesses and moved very quickly on it. Um, and saw that that was a need and determined how much money they were gonna put aside and then move forward with the program. And it was very successful. So Mike um, has some familiarity with that and um, I had some the opportunity to speak to Jason Bells of their first election about it um, at our CCM conference. Um, and it was, it was a darn good plan. <laughs> But it put hands in uh, dollars into the hands of those businesses quickly, and so I think there are things we can move on faster while we determine some of the other projects. You know, do we want to put something in the park? Do we want to? You know, Troy could be chomping at the bit to say they've got a road project that's been sitting out here. That's something we could invest in. Um, you know, Jenny maybe wanting to make changes to the senior center or the food pantry, and some of those things aren't as time sensitive as some of these other items. Do we think that we could uh, develop the evaluation criteria in a meeting? Like, do you think at the next meeting we could, as a group? So if the next meeting we worked to develop, we appoint a chair, we work to establish what we are gonna consider, use to consider the projects, and then, you know, and then actually consider whatever emergent, you know, Whatever things have come before you or whoever that feel need to be dealt with, 
very soon, if we can develop the criteria ahead of time and then look at those requests. I mean, you think mm -hmm. we can do that in, like at the next meeting? And even, and even if you all wanted to, I, I'd, I'd be fine with if everybody wanted to send me their ideas to put it all in one place and maybe start a form, an outline of a form, so we can look at that and then use that to then add to it. And then can you get the information for what they finalize on its staff and then take a look at the starting point for someone that's created for you? Yeah. We can no, roll with that. Yeah. Um, another use for the funds, and I want us all to keep in mind as Donna sits here with us, it's, it's um, the reporting aspect, um, the financial piece falls into the finance office. If we felt the need um, to spend dollars on someone to, to handle that part, that is acceptable use of the dollars too. So um, we could those things in mind that those are acceptable uses. So if we thought this were going to be a lot more reporting than our um, already pretty taxed out um, finance department doing school and um, town. So there are several grants out there that Donna is now managing um, that she didn't two years ago between the town, CARES fund, um, all the school um, relief dollars and then this fund. So that's something we could look at. Obviously, if we were ever to use utilize that, it would be uh, a temporary position, uh, short term. Do we know what the reporting required? Like, what type of what types of information we would have to report on? It's in the larger role. Yes, and our first yes. reporting, uh, it's, it's 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 very well detailed out. In the there's more information in the. Overview and then the rule. It's because I know one of the things I had mentioned to you was trying to use the open gov system to do all the, you know to take I mean set up the form for the submissions, but then also we could use it to track the workflow. And if we knew what we wanted to report on, if we captured the information, mm -hmm. we could report. Right. Um, okay. It's not going to be a financial software and someone who works out of that office, but if somebody wanted to know how many dollars we had in progress versus had allocated you know what categories as long as we capture the information on the front end we can report on it and uh i'm just thinking when we were talking about you said how many years is this and i'm thinking oh right this is years and so i'm you know thinking of how will we track the status of the project and files and it might be I mean, we could certainly do it and i could we could re any of those fields, forms, or information we could we could report on generating Excel reports by record or whatever. Uh, so that might be something worth exploring. And using that dollar from the fund to cover the cost of the. Oh no, I could just do that. Okay. That would be. I just could set it up. It wouldn't cost us anything. There's no cost for the open cup. No, we would just set it up as a record type. So that is an option. What I saw, Mike, there were not tons. Well, I shouldn't speak on too much, but I know with the municipal projects, there were not a lot of um, criteria that you had to meet to show that the project was was impacted by COVID. There wasn't as much as I would have expected, and I think that's why that's where the final rule came in versus the interim final rule. There were a lot before. But they were like they got feedback from people saying this is too restrictive or you know we have other impacts so you really just have to show some type of impact and in some cases if it's under a certain dollar amount you don't have to show any impact at all if you are depending on what type of um like yeah just under a certain dollar amount you don't have to show an impact at all depending on like if you're a municipality versus like yeah, right. tribal and things like that so but it is all in that huge document and a lot of the real rules are at the very end of it. It's not, it's a well organized, but it doesn't have a table of contents. That document. Oh, <laughs> <word. laughs> this is like you scroll you. zero, scroll zero, looking for that, what you need. So the revenue loss really um, utilizing in within that really cuts down on the amount of reporting because it's a, it's a pretty broad use. So you do have to, um, you know, justify how um, something falls into the uh, broadband or sewer or the premium pay category or the public um, health crisis category. When you go into revenue loss, it's much more broad. So we might want to think about that 
when we look at our projects and what falls into typical government services um, and utilize that particular um, area. But yes, like there's lots of information reporting and we report out, none of you recall, I, the non-NEUs already or entitlement committees already began their reporting. Our first reporting is in April. Um, and we had got prior to this commission, we had gone to town meeting um, and allocated um, approximately $123,000 in projects. So when we are starting, you know, we'll include those, but there'll be that money dollars left. And we're just starting to spend dollars for project um, in the basement here is the first actual dollars that we put out since then. So, so I'll gather the information from um, what Stafford is, is utilizing, see if I can get some from any other towns as well. Um, so Christina, you want us all to send to you yeah, our yeah. thoughts on, on criteria. criteria, both acceptance and approval? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Any further discussion now on project approval? Would is this committee um, opposed to somebody bringing us forth something sooner, and then we can discuss it and put it as specific items on the next agenda, or do we want to wait? I think we can start talking about them. Okay. We don't necessarily have to approve them. Yeah, and I will tell you the items that they used um, on their agenda and staff was discussion and possible action, so it gave them the leeway to actually move if something um, they felt that the, they were ready to move forward with. Hopefully we don't have to get, to, just my opinion, to carry away with requirements and the process and, and I'm, the guidelines are pretty much here. Anybody can read that. It's kind of, some of it's just kind of a nut of judgment on what's really on what we want to do. I know it's got to be a framework, but hopefully it won't get too, too crazy. I agree with you. I think it's going to be, you know, to even be considered, it's going to, going to fall into two categories. Either you meet the rule requirements or you don't. So mm -hmm. we may be able to put some things aside. And then within that, how will we pray? I think how we prioritize them is the, is going to be the toughest thing for us to choose. How do we prioritize? Um, because if they meet the final rule, then they're all eligible. Now we just have to decide. Which goes back to Mike's really good point about making decisions. Yeah. You have the breadth of everything that is eligible. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm still confused about lost revenue. Yeah. And it seems like that is something that we could potentially figure out what that number might be. But I don't know. It, it doesn't mean revenue that was lost over the last you can. few years. So yeah, so you could, be, when the interim final rule came out, there was a formula. You had to go back to your your last 2019 season, which would have been 18, 19. And then um, there were some calculations. Mm -hmm. When our auditor last year came in, after this came out, when Michael was here, and it may have been this summer when he was here, uh, was here July, I think, he took a quick look at um, our numbers. He took a quick look at the formula. And at that point, his opinion was that we could take almost all of it using the formula in lost revenue. It was a 4.1% um, over year over year compounding. So mm -hmm. how many of us see that? Yeah. Most towns don't. The new rule, um, as it was presented, offers a standard allowance of $10 million, allowing recipients to select between the standard amount or a complete full revenue loss calculation. So um, re recipients that select the standard amount may use that amount, in many cases, uh, their full award, which ours is less than 10 million, for government services with streamlined reporting requirements. So, um, it really just streamlines the process. We take a look at our submissions and see that all but maybe one or two fall into that category. It may make it simple for us, and then the reporting is is uh, less cumbersome for sure. 
Do you know if the categories such as uh, human services and the small business group, could they fall under that? Can you allocate money under that? You can't. I don't think they do because we wouldn't normally as a, a government fund that. Right. Fund that. Um, so yeah. I would say, you know, we take a, a certain dollar amount. Let's say we decide okay. on 500,000. I'm just going to pick a nice round number. And that's what we determine we've used for those projects. And then we were okay. using the rest of it for government services. But, you know, did we want to do water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure? Those are options. I'm not sure Wilmington is right for water and sewer um, currently, but it's always possible, depending on where we're thinking in the. What about a really simple example of thinking of parking where they couldn't hold summer camps? So there was no revenue from summer camps that came in. Prior year, right? So that could no, be. There was yeah. summer camp, but, but there was. Oh, right. oh, they didn't so. do individual revenue loss. Mm -hmm. Re the revenue loss was our, our first option was only to look at this formula, mm -hmm. and it was as a whole. Yes. Yeah. And so it was now it's either still do that or um, take the. But but that's how we could look at it though. Yeah. If we wanted to, we could say okay, rec, rec lost a lot of money, so maybe that would help them. Lots of um, generous folks who they need, to, we need the uh, stimulus that they received mm -hmm. and donated it all. Um, so the the towns, uh, the majority of towns that that I've um, spoken with uh, on a closer basis, Parks and Rec is where we saw revenue loss mm -hmm. uh, because they just had to completely shut down. They just couldn't function. Right. So that's where we saw a loss in revenue. Oh, as a whole, we didn't have. You know, we had loves. Um, coming into those. And so our overall revenue, we didn't see right. a decline. But when you use their formula, you have revenue loss because mm -hmm. they're very generous with the number yeah. um, that they're you, utilizing. But yes, we could look at individuals and say, right, we know for sure they lost X dollars. Yeah, like the library, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They probably they don't really get a lot of revenue in the first place, but um, they, didn't have an they opportunity could just to help bolster their application. But even if you did that, you'd still want to do it proportionately because we may have had an overall loss of more than 1.7 million. So therefore, it's not like if this group lost this amount, you're going to be able to pay exactly that back. You would want to look at it as a part of the overall proportion of loss and then maybe give this money out proportionally in that way. But I, I mean, I think it's a great idea, but I also think that that is very time consuming. And I think that there's, if you want to get really detailed with it, there's so many factors that we may not be able to consider, like confounding factors. This might have already gone down, and then it just gets so intense. Do you understand? You know what I mean? Like it gets so intense with getting all the details right of determining exactly who's more, you know, who has lost more. But I think as an overall guiding place, that's good. But I hope you understand what I mean, because from from what I just heard. In some ways, someone in human services, I think it's in human services on the end. Is that Jenny? Who sits on the end? But you had just said that, well, actually you had to increase, right? So like, but that doesn't mean we wouldn't want to give you any money. So it's like, maybe it was only an increase in the food pantry or in a particular area, but we don't want to use that as hard and fast because it will not necessarily make the best use of funds to make our town better and recover. That's all. I'm just as a discussion point. <laughs> but I think Christine is saying it, it's maybe uh, another talking point for a department that says, listen, we really lost a lot of, I'd like this project and we lost revenue that we would have normally been able to do this with on our own. Right. Um, and so it just may be a, an extra incentive for us to approve that project. And for mm -hmm. some of those, it's easy enough to see where the revenue um, losses were. Yeah. So. Most of our departments don't work on a revenue basis. So it, it's really simple. Um, there's no revenue in the selections office, so we didn't lose any. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we don't have any. <laughs> um, so, but Parks and Rec for sure, and, and Jenny's department. And yes, Jenny may have had some increases in revenue, 
it put her in the surplus, but they're all earmarked very specific. But yeah, that's all off budget. Yeah. yeah. So she's a library that. might be the only other place. Yeah. Fun 17 um, in our fire department may, is, is a place where we may have um, seen some lost revenue too. Yeah. Um, simply because for a, a large portion of uh, the end of 2020 or mid 2020, they weren't transporting people. So no transport um, for dollars to that yeah. fund. So, you know, anything we could do here would probably counter what the town is gonna do later, spending dollars out of fund 17. If we use ARPA dollars, it frees up fund 17 dollars right. down the road and makes up for those, supplements those, so. Good point. Yeah. All right. We had a discussion on project approval, so everyone will get their um, thoughts and ideas to Christina, and we will um, have maybe a mock up of a, a plan for our next meeting. So that brings us to Tom. No, 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 no for a okay. second. We were going to send like Stafford's yes. information to us all. Yeah. So can, okay, whatever you have. Yeah, Great. whatever I can get from them, Thanks. I will send um, to you all. That brings us to discussion of community involvement. It's really important that we hear from our community. We will, um, Kelsey and I will put together the results of the survey and get those out to you so you can see all of the thoughts. And it's wide ranging, as you can imagine, too. We don't need any of this extra money. This is waste of taxpayer dollars, To We should build this. We should fix this. Um, we should um, now do this. So there are some great ideas in there, and everyone's opinion is important. Um, and we can take a look at that. And then do we want to set up, um, talk about moving forward with a, a, a public hearing of sorts um, to hear from folks? Do we want to wait until after we come up with some criteria? Do we think that we're going to want to hear from people about what they think we should spend the money on? We're going to want to hear from them once we decide what to spend the money on or both? All of the above. It's important that we keep them informed through the process. We hear what they want, and then we share with them what it is that we're doing and how we're utilizing the funds. So should we do some type of outreach? I mean, should we do something public facing that if we're thinking very quickly, we might make, take action on certain requests? Let them know that there may be a meeting in the next two weeks that we might be making those decisions. It could be like planning and zoning where it's on the agenda. We could potentially take action, but there's a public hearing prior to that start of that meeting. Right. So. That's a good idea. So we, we have decided on a, a middle of the day, a working day time frame. I think it's important we do something um, an evening time. Even if it's not the entire commission and it's a um, less formal event, um, I would be open um, to doing something on a weekend and or an evening, just so we can give people the most opportunity to um, have their voice heard. It's something I think we should um, record if possible, and if people can reference it, just so that you know we hear where they're coming from and what their thoughts are, and then share with them how we can use the the dollars um, and put together a, a, a quick um, presentation on how we can utilize the dollars so that when they see that some of their ideas that came from that survey right off the bat we can't consider it's because they don't fall into the parameters of the, the final rule and so we share with them very specifics about this and then an open conversation open dialogue with our residents you know i think it's really important that we help our businesses. I think it's really, you know, important that we put investments into our park, etc. So, so uh, thoughts on that? We can put something together. I make that face and say relatively quickly because first it's finding a night where there isn't already um, a budget-related town meeting <laughs> of sorts. The the days that are few and far between, but there are Friday nights. There are you know, weekend afternoons, and we could do a couple. I know uh, when um, the superintendent set up some meetings regarding moving forward the school building options, there was a variety of times so people um, could come in smaller uh, events. And it's up to us to decide, but involving um, residents and giving them as many opportunities as we can. If they don't come out, then 
we can't change that, but if you give me the opportunity to speak, that's great to hear. Them. I think whatever at that sort of presentation, we would want to have our criteria set. So it would definitely be after a next meeting. meeting. Okay. If not, if I have to figure it out at that meeting, but <laughs> I think that'd be a big part of it. So we'll I'll gather some information about starting like maybe a series of conversations um, to bring to you as options. Um, You're going to email out the um, toolkit from CCM and then, oh shoot, there's something else. Oh, can you also email the um, the criterion that Stafford had created yeah. to their committee? That. And then we'll have everyone's email so that we can email Christina uh, with our ideas on um, the criterion. Yes. Okay. Just want to clarify. Thanks. Anything else? It's a special meeting, so we can't add anything to the agenda today. Um, so anything else that falls into community involvement we want to tackle today? I move to adjourn. All right. Second. Okay. Motion to adjourn, seconded by Mike at 238. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Stop the recording. Thank you all. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Christina. Thank you.